Uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, this course and how it is um, dealt as a product, this course as a product, right? So we can see that there are two views uh, to any discourse. And um, when one is, uh, it, it is, you know, viewed as a product that is as an object that uh, gets produced by the people speaking. So when we are speaking, there's some, there are some sentences, maybe, um, maybe some pauses, they are also the part of the product. So whenever we are speaking, there is this product that is produced towards the end. And that is something which we call as um, text or the sequence that is uh, there. So the product towards the end that is produced is um, through the process of a discourse is, um, is, 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 uh, this is product, right? And is, is text, sorry. And um, we take those sentences, we take those words and we analyze it and we look at how this product has uh, produced. So one is the product uh, which, is, um, um, which is produced uh, by the people who are speaking. And um, uh, the second one is uh, the process. Now, the process is... Um, what the what the people are speaking actually do a position that has been developed mostly by the uh, social linguist and anthropologist now when we uh, were we, when we studied in sociolinguistics we see that how a word is produced and we look at the process of why it is produced we look at uh, the way the, we look at the context in which it is it is produced because there is a person who is speaking this um, speaking this these words but there is a whole process behind that which is um, working to produce this product so we know that in order to attain your goals um, or in order to attract someone or in order to um, show your anger you choose some words and the way you choose it the way you join it you um, uh, produce a product and that product is responsible uh, for uh, creating the effect that this desired effect that you wanted and but behind that there is a complete process so uh, discourse uh, and also uh, the process is also when uh, the product is produced and how it has impacted the uh, person um, so we have um, uh, in that we have we see that we have uh, text view that is uh, the only only the product which is simple sentences so we say hello and then there is a reply to that uh, hello right it's a reply mm, or or you say how are you and then there is a reply to that i am fine so these text views however these text views are joined activities means that a discourse is not just merely combination of sentences but it is much more than that that is there is a link between um, how are you and I am doing well or I am fine or I am okay or life is going and all these replies there is a link to that to this one question and that's how we look at the product so once when we look at the product and when we look at the answer that is um, I am fine or uh, all fine or all set or or I am extremely happy so we know that from where it is coming, we know the essence of uh, that um, that product. Okay, we can uh, discourse analysis actually offers um, uh, this this uh, view through which this approach through which we um, look at uh, the human language as well as the human cognition. Cognition means that the thought processes which are going on once we produce that language the communication that is the interaction which is going on between um, two people or more than two people even if it it has no like because in interaction you have a person involved uh, known audiences person involved in the communication and you get replies however in communication it's not necessary that you will always have a person communication can be one-way communication as well for example tv channels 
and that is you know uh, we have communication but we cannot like directly communicate or reply to them so uh, discourse analysis is something which offers us this um, uh, approach through which we can analyze um, uh, a discourse as a process as well as as a um, as a product so uh, we look at language uh, the way it is used the way it is used in a specific context the way it is uh, the meaning is taken by the people and the way um, these social roles are enacted uh, that is for example if i'm a female or i'm a teacher so the kind of language that i use i enact uh, through that language the the my identity is formed through my enactment so if i'm a female i act and speak like a female and i act and speak like a female and therefore the production is also affected by that the way i the way language is produced as well as the way language is reproduced that is i do the same thing repeatedly again and again so if i greet someone i greet um greetings are, are going are, are reproducing again and again and again and the same greetings are different in different social contexts by the different people and the different uh, in different ways in which we uh, enact in a society in order to know the production we need to understand and we look at the text um, but when we are looking at the text we have to look at the uh, speakers who are involved in the speaking in in the in the in the discourse we look at the text genres that is who what what is um, as spoken and what kind of uh, structure is followed in that what kind of the choice of words are there we look at the uh, manner in which the production is uh, done that is the style and the register um, which is register somehow is related to genres as well and uh, style we have already discussed in social linguistics that is every per ev it, it is is it the individual style which varies or is it the style of a social class or is it the style of a female or a male what is that style which is uh, through which it is uh, produced we look at the medium as well not only just oral and written medium but we look at the other mediums as well that is um, uh, uh, whether it is uh, through uh, uh, email whether it is through uh, within written whether it is uh, through email whether it is through you know hand um, handwritten uh, assignment or uh, uh, within oral we have telephonic conversation face to face conversation so it may vary now within medium as well we look at these keeping in view all these things we look at the uh, uh, we look at the product in reference to this um, uh, this uh, uh, discourse as a product we are going to study um, and uh, the model of um, uh, which is called uh, uh, a sinclair and colthard model a ranking uh, a rank structure model that rank structure model is um, something which led to uh, the this this um, discourse analysis perspective of a product it is we can say that um, it's it started discourse analysis as a product analysis started with the uh, with this model now we're going to uh, study it uh, in detail Sinclair and Coulthard uh, model. It was uh, actually given from the perspective of classroom um, teaching, and it was like the communication between a teacher and a, a student, and that communication of the teacher and a student, which was taken as a product of that discourse, and it was analyzed. Um, by Sinclair and Coulthard and then they gave this model based on that uh, exchange or based on that communication which ha which was a classroom based um, communication and as I've already told you that SNC model uh, was a starting point for discourse analysis uh, and it, 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 it can be because it's it was a model which uh, can be taken and can be applied to other than the um, classroom environment as well that is for example a, um, a mother and a child speaking or for example um, 
for example in, in an interview interviewer and interviewee speaking so it can be applied anywhere uh, to the communication and that is why we we say that it was a starting point for um, uh, da though it was criticized by many people because um, they said that the model is purely based on uh, from the teacher's perspective that is because teacher already knows the answer so the teacher is dominant in the communication and and um, the it's it's like um, the the research which was done um, by by them was uh, was based mostly on the teacher's perspective and not not from the student's perspective in um, in the rank scale model we have um, in the rank scale model we have uh, uh, we have highest rank is of the uh, lesson that is it starts from the lesson uh, we we can say that it is like this we have a lesson a major lesson that is um, for example today's lesson is discourse as product so this is a lesson then it is divided into transactions then it is it it is a uh, transaction is made up of exchanges then exchanges are made up of moves uh, in which we have this um, um, uh, acts these different acts that we have so the, these this was the structure which was given by or the model uh, which was uh, given by uh, sinclair and coltert in 1975 and we're going to study it in detail okay uh, this uh, model is uh, sometimes called um, birmingham uh, model because it was started uh, over there and that is why it is called um, it is sometimes called birmingham uh, model or it is sometimes called the ranking model uh, the rank structure model or uh, sometimes it's also called uh, sinclair and coltherd um, ranking model okay um this uh, model was created um uh, from the study which was conducted in a traditional native uh, speaker uh, school classroom and then from there it was uh, the pattern was created and the model was created so basically this model applies to the native speaker um, school um, uh, classrooms okay uh, we not uh, discuss it over here because then it will confuse you it's first the example and then later on um, the explanation is there so first i'll go to the explanation so that it's clear to you and then we'll come back to the example like this like the discourse type explored the boundaries are clearly clearly marked similarly uh, the stages of a formal spoken discourse are also often uh, clearly marked with utterances such as i uh, rest my case let me ask you another question and next next witnesses so uh, this is the example from the um, uh, court uh, courtroom so because we know that in courtrooms there is a specific pattern which is followed that is you know, there is a uh, the 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 way um, next um, session starts and the way session starts there are certain words and phrases which are repeat because it's a traditional strict um, a structure which is uh, followed when it or pattern which is followed uh, of the communication in uh, courtrooms however uh, same goes for the classrooms as well so some boundaries are um, marked when it is uh, when it is formal settings like courtrooms as well as uh, classrooms uh, so uh, in Sinclair's um, five ranks model we have five um, uh, we have uh, we have basically five patterns or five structures that they are going to uh, that they have given one is lesson transaction exchange move and act uh, lesson is uh, something uh, uh, which is overall lesson as i've already explained that is today's lesson is this right so this whole lesson contains transactions when when i'm teaching in the classroom um, it's like uh, we have multiple transactions in that, right? And within multiple transactions, then we're going to study that we have focus and uh, form as well. So in within that, but uh, transactions transactions have a structure 
and they are expressed expressed in terms of exchanges right so in the um, so in the in the uh, in, in transactions we have um, uh, exchanges right or transactions are made, each transaction is made of exchanges different exchanges and then exchanges are each exchange is made up of move and then move has uh, got uh, a different acts so um, when we talk when we talk about uh, acts is actually the uh, lowest rank in the scale because uh, we we can call it a unit as well just like for example words form sentences and then sentences form a language right so in the same way uh, we can say that uh, acts are kind of alphabets a b c d which combine together to form uh, words and then these words are formed together uh, when wo words combine together to form sentences and then these sentences combine together to form a language so language is a complete i hope you can understand it in this way so um, Though it's a bit different, but I'm just trying to explain it to you in in uh, in exam by giving example of a language. So, uh, same is the case with the patterns as well, exchanges as well, and transactions as well. And lesson lesson is something which is made up of uh, transactions, and then transactions are made up of uh, exchanges, and then exchanges are made up of moves, and moves are made up of uh, acts. Okay. Um, coming towards uh, uh, transactions now tra the boundaries of transactions are typically marked by the frames whose realization at the level of the form is limited to five words that is okay well now right good uttered with a strong stress high falling intonation and followed by the by a short pause if when you look at this example you'll know what is transaction um, frame is for example, over here in this transaction, this is one transaction, right? Well, today I thought we'd do three quizzes, right? This is now transaction. Now in this transaction, uh, every transaction is made up of um, frame and focus. That's what uh, the model says. That transaction is made up of frame and focus. Though it's not necessary as they are saying here that, you know, it is always the beginning of the uh, transaction. Sometimes it's not the beginning of the, uh, exactly the beginning of the transaction. So if you see over here that frame is well and focus is, uh, because this is what the point of focus is over here in, um, uh, in, the, uh, in the conversation. Or for example, when I say, uh, when I start uh, a lecture and I say that, okay, today we are going to study this. So when I say, okay, today we are going to study this, this is actually the uh, transaction is actually the beginning of that, right? The beginning when, when I start the lecture and I say this, that today we are going to study that. So this is the transaction and transactions are um, transactions are the combination of different, uh, you know, topics that we are studying within one uh, within one, uh, le one lesson all the transactions right so when i uh, when or or uh, when i say well today we are going to study this so in that well or okay uh, let's begin our lecture so the frame is okay in that example or here in this example the frame is well and then we have focus uh, which is today i thought we'd do uh, three quizzes uh, end the transaction with another focus summarizing the transaction. It may also happen that you um, are um, ending something, right? Uh, end the transaction with another focus uh, summarizing the transaction. That is uh, something which is um, uh, uh, summarizing the uh, transaction which you have already done. So uh, as I've told you, the transaction is actually the uh, mm, the transaction is actually the different uh, chunks that we cover in one lesson. So when we are covering uh, chunks, we either we start with the transaction and then we end it with the transaction that you know, let's start the lecture. Okay, let's start the lecture. And then we end it with uh, a transaction as well. See, uh, what we have just done is given some energy to this pen frame now, right? So, uh, 
sometimes you end it as well. So once we are done with the lecture and we um, uh, like we are done with one part, we say now let's go towards um, the second uh, part of it. So just like, for example, when I'm explaining uh, one section to you, I start with that. Um, uh, I started with this course as a product and then I when I jump towards, so now we are going to study uh, the rank, um, the ranking structure or ranking model. And this is the part of, so it's like the whole lesson is one lesson, but within that one lesson, we have different parts and every part when every part is the transaction and every transaction is, uh, has a start and has the end as well. So when you are starting it, it, it has a frame and focus both. And when you are ending it, you also inform the students in which you give um, a focus and a frame as well that is what we have just done is given some energy to this pen now and you go towards the next transaction now now let's start with this thing no, you go towards the next transaction. So transaction have a structure expressed in terms of exchanges they begin and often end with a boundary exchange which consists of a frame or a focus followed by a succession of informing, directing, or eliciting uh, exchanges. Now, all these transactions, according to Sinclair and Colthard, are made up of exchanges. Now, within these transactions, we have exchanges. Why is a teacher communicating to a student? A teacher is communicating to a, to a student either to inform them or to direct them, that is to give them orders or to elicit some kind of response from them. That is, for example, if I ask you, well, you tell me what is the answer of this question, right? So either I'm eliciting some kind of response or even when I am trying to say that elicit a response in the sense that, uh, are you all getting my point? When I ask something like that. So when I say that, are you all getting my point? So it's actually, um, I am eliciting some kind, and then you reply to me, yes, we are getting or no, we are not getting something like that. So the, the task of a teacher is to inform, to elicit, to direct or to elicit some exchanges. And that is why in this, all we have uh, some, uh, we have these uh, exchanges, right? Uh, within transaction, we have, uh, within transactions, uh, we have these exchanges. Okay. Um, Informing, directing, or eliciting exchanges are concerned with what is more commonly known as stating, commanding, or questioning the behavior. As I've already explained that, what is the task of the teacher? Informing. So how does the teacher inform? The teacher informs through stating. How does a teacher direct a student? Through commanding, give orders, commands, right? And how does a teacher elicit an a, a elicit a exchange from the, from the student? They do it through um questioning the behavior right there's this question they do it to through these three things so exchanges exchanges right are done these three types of exchanges are done through these three types of behavior that is informing directing and eliciting kind of exchanges are done through stating commanding and questioning behavior Okay, now these exchanges are expressed in terms of moves. Every, everything that you do, you say is a move within that structure, right? Let me give you example and then you'll understand what is a move. This is a move, right? A teacher asks a question, what's that? Student replies, an X. The teacher says, it's an X, yes. Wait, so if you see, this is the move. The structure of the exchanges are expressed in terms of moves and these moves structures are proposed uh, for exchange initiation, for response and follow up. Now, if you see in that we have three moves in one exchange, and that is to initiate, to response, and the follow-up, which we call as IRF. It is called IRF in the exchanges. That is, we have in one move, we have 
uh, in in exchanges we have moves and those moves are i r and f the three move eliciting structure is the normal form inside the classroom for two reasons and if you see this is always the case with the students whether you um, like in every class there is this uh, structure which is followed when eliciting this uh, eliciting for eliciting structure why because uh, there are two reasons for that one answers directed to the teacher are uh, are difficult for others to hear and thus the repetition when it occurs may be the first chance some children have to hear what their uh, what their uh, colleague said or what their class fellow said right so the first reason is that maybe the teacher knows that the student is the student's language was either uh, you know not clear to the other class fellows and that is why the teacher repeated the answer so when i ask you a question you answer you give me the answer i always repeat the answer right i always say yes this is and then repeat the answer whatever was uh, given so this is the first reason the second reason is that many of the questions asked are ones to which the teacher question a questioner always knows the answer the intention being to discover whether the people also know the second reason is that the teacher also the teacher is the one who knows the answer but only ask the question because she or he wants to know whether the student has understood it or not so for example if i ask you a question in the class that um, so what are the types of um, uh, uh, or 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 what are the uh, what are the elements of communication and i already know the answer but then i ask one student and a student replies to me that you know these are the um, uh, these are the elements of communication and then i repeat yes this 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 these are the elements of communication so this is something that i have repeated i always do that and if you look at the uh, pat the same pattern it is followed by almost every teacher right in almost every classroom when they try to elicit uh, some kind of information so for eliciting exchange we always have these three moves we always have these three moves however for others we may have uh, different moves moves combine to form exchanges and moves themselves consist of one or more acts each move consists of one or more acts it's not necessary that um one move will always be you know um will always be as the last uh, uh, the last um, you know step or pattern and, or rank it is move has move is has also a move is also made up of acts it's not necessary that it will always be made of uh, one act it can be made up of uh, one or more acts if you look at the example you'd see that this what's that is one move an x is one move but here we have two moves sorry uh, Uh, we acts here we have two acts so here we have one act what's in this one um in this one uh move we have what's that is one act then an x is is um one act which is made up of which is um this move this move is made up of uh one act this move is made up of one act here in this move we have two acts that is it it's an x yes we have two moves over here uh, we sorry we have two acts over here so in this one move here we have two acts we have two acts in this we have one and in this we have one act so a move is made up of um a move is made up of one or more acts it can be more more acts as well so uh the in this this whole exchange this whole exchange which is this whole exchange as an example what's that an x it's an x yes this whole exchange is made of three moves right each move is made of one or more than one act but this one move is made of one act and x is made of 
one act it's an x yes is made of two acts right if you look at this move you'll see that there is a pattern standard pattern which is followed which was found by uh, sinclair and colthard and that pattern is ask answer comment the teacher asks the student answers and then the teacher comments it it's not necessary that the teacher will always uh, answer with it's an x yes the teacher may only answer with yes very good now we still have two moves over here and it can only be yes or it can only be very good so in that one in that one move it can be more than one like let's suppose let me make it uh, more than one move let's suppose let's make it three moves over a uh, three uh, acts over here in this move uh, let let's make it three acts uh i ask a student what's that the student replies an x i reply to a student student it's an x yes very good now here we have in one move we have three acts so but when you look at this um this exchange right when you look at this exchange this exchange has certain pattern and that pattern is tpt so the teacher asks the pupil reply and the teacher replies back right so this pattern is one which was found by them and they said that tpt is the standard pattern which is followed all the time in the class now if you look go back to the same example um over here uh, which was in the beginning or you come back to this example in both examples the standard pattern of tpt is followed t p t right the standard pattern is followed now now then uh, i've got some things here too hands up what's that what is it these are all the acts right saw it's a saw yes this is a saw what do you do with a saw cut wood see from here another t is started teacher asks student replies and the teacher replies again till here this double um, bars are showing that you know here one exchange ends and look at it from that perspective here one exchange ends so if you see uh, one exchange starts from here and then we say yes this is a saw and then from here another exchange starts and it says t p t once again that is what do um what do with a saw cut wood yes you're shouting out though right and then again tpt starts what do we do with a saw marvelet the student pupil replies cut wood we cut wood and then tpt and tpt is followed in the same way tpt and tpt so the uh sinclair and uh, call third uh, call this unit an exchange right this tpt is the pattern which is an exchange which is made up of moves and acts because moves are made up of acts and this particular exchange consists of a question an answer and a comment right uh so so that is why it is uh, a three part exchange a three part exchange which is a, a three move as well we can say that it's a three move so we can also say that it's a three move exchange right a three part part exchange or a three move um exchange uh, we can say that okay Uh, these are some examples that you can see that is uh, what time is it 6:30 thanks now if you look at these moves these moves are not from the classroom like not from the standard classroom uh standard classroom uh, exchanges this shows that you can apply this um, uh, this model to any other 
any other uh, exchange as well uh, to any other uh, communication as well and that is why this uh, sinclair and call third model uh, was considered one of the uh, one of the greatest uh, achievements and it started uh, uh, da it, it was um, uh, it, it was considered a initiative uh, for the da discourse analysis right in the field of discourse analysis. Okay, uh, now um, when you look at the first example, right? What's what time is it? It is a question. The way in uh, the Sinclair uh, uh, and Colthard said in 1975 model that it is a question. It has to be a question and then an answer and then you know comment. It is the same. But if you look at this and second and the third one, Tim's coming tomorrow. Oh yeah, yes. Now here, it's not a question. It's some kind of information that they are giving. So in such responses, if you see in the first move, in a two example, in the second example, uh, Tim is coming tomorrow, is heard as giving information. And the first move in uh, the third example is as a command because you're asking someone to hold the boxes, I guess. Uh, here it is, see. Here, hold this, right? And uh, there are some boxes and B takes the boxes and then the uh, uh, A, A replies. So it's in second, the response is, um, even the responses that are there, uh, the replies that are there are different uh, for um, for one, it is the standard one that is as Sinclair and Colthard said, uh, what time is it? And then they tells the time and then there is a comment. But for the second and third, it is different because in second, you have first acknowledgement and then uh, you have uh, in the third, you have a nonverbal response because the uh, whoever is the person B is taking the boxes, right? This is a nonverbal response. So in order to make it um, uh, make it more sequence with the with the rest of the um, with the uh, uh, with the rest of the uh, uh, context as well. That is not only to the classroom, but uh, other other um, uh, context as well. Uh, they uh, changed it, and they uh, in later later they called it as uh, moving from the uh, from the question, answer, and uh, comment move to opening move, answering move, and the third follow-up move. So uh, opening move, uh, second is answering move, and the third is follow-up move. So they gave these, um, they, they gave it those names. However, later on in 1982, Sinclair with Brazil um, preferred to call it uh, the initi in his, uh, initiation response and, <clears throat> and follow up, follow up, right? So they changed the names uh, to these, <clears throat> to these uh, uh, names. So uh, though now it's, you can call both, it, it's called, <clears throat> It's called both of these moves and you can go with the uh, Sinclair and Brazil's explanation as well as you can go with uh, uh, with Sinclair and call that later uh, <clears throat> later uh, explanation, which is opening, answering and follow up. Okay, <clears throat> so. Um, Every exchange uh, has to be initiated, whether with a statement or a question or a command, a command equally naturally, uh, someone had to respond to that. So whenever you initiate an exchange, you have a response to that. And then, um, <clears throat> then uh, in some way there is another response to that. So um, the status of the follow-up move is slightly different though in classroom, um, it fulfills the uh, wider role that is of, uh, you know, you ask the student and then there is a reply and then in, 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 the, in, the, 
in in the classroom it's it's fine but when it comes to in other situations it may be different uh, maybe it's somewhere the act of politeness and um, somewhere the follow up element might uh, even be extended further that is the follow up uh, is then you know again goes towards another and another uh, move and the exchange is uh, extended uh, the pattern of uh, uh, of um, such exchanges may vary from culture to culture as well so it's not necessary that it will always be the same uh, it we are talking we are actually talking about the other situations not the classroom situation or the cl classroom context so it may vary from culture to culture and um, you know uh, uh, may vary from um, society to society um for example um, you know they also vary from uh, setting to setting as well uh, when we say thank you to a ticket collector at a station barrier um, so it's you know something different as compared to um, you saying thank you to a teacher so it may um, vary right from uh, culture to culture as well as to se from setting to setting Uh, in the class, they uh, Coulthard and uh, Sinclair started um, this uh, from a classroom because classroom seemed convenient. It was a place where they could control uh, their study and where it was a very formal um, interaction. Uh, for, with formal interaction, uh, this structure, this discourse structure was easy to analyze. Uh, and its evaluation was also easy, but uh, because because in classroom the the structure of this uh, the pattern was same. However, uh, when it, we talk about uh, conversations outside the classroom, um, they may vary a lot in the way uh, the people talk. So um, their degree of uh, structuredness um, may vary and that is why it's difficult uh, uh, for um, for a, a discourse analyst to apply the same moves uh, and uh, the same um, uh, same uh, the same exchanges uh, to uh, something which is outside the classroom something which is very free something which is very informal um, we can um, we can say that though the basic structure would remain the same however there can be you know changes in the uh, in the different units so for example we can say that it's not necessary that your move will always be um, uh, your move will always be a question it can be uh, something through which you initiate your communication and then there is a response to that and then there is a uh, follow up to that right so it's like i r and f i r f that is uh, you initiate response you give response and then there is a follow up to that you can apply that format and uh, you know it would vary though this hierarchy would remain the same uh, you'll always have a transaction exchange move and which is made up of acts but those acts and moves and exchanges would change in uh, informal um, in uh, in informal uh, context uh, where the communication is not very strict and um, controlled. However, in uh, classrooms, it's very controlled communication, and that is why it's uh, it 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 was the same. However, uh, they've always also given you the example of doctor patient. So as I've given you an example of formal in like for example courts. The communication is the same, but uh, with interviewer and interviewee, the communication are, you know, it's the formal communication and that is why it's the same. So, but it's going to be very difficult to analyze something uh, which is um, in informal or casual or spontaneous context. Okay, why? Because um, you have uh, interruptions uh, in the communication but um, in uh, rigid communications in rigid conversation situations such as uh, teacher talk or doctor patient talk it is relatively easy to predict 
who is speaking and who will ask the question and who is going to interrupt who is allowed to interrupt only the teacher is allowed to interrupt or only the doctor is can interrupt only the doctor can ask right so certain things are determined or in courts you know the judge can the lawyer can so in uh, formal settings it's determined however in informal settings it's not determined and that's that's why it's more complicated to analyze um, as compared to the uh, formal settings okay um you can uh, we we are going to study um uh, these uh, turn takings as well but uh, this approach um is uh, something which was used and then through this we came up with a lot of uh, new ideas and new things uh, in uh, in this course analysis that is we also uh, talked about turn taking and then uh, you know within turn taking we had uh, adjacency pairs and then um, like how the utterances are um, happening that is after an order there is either after a request there is either as an acceptance or not accepting the um, the the uh, request so we have these patterns and we talked about these patterns and um, and and after this uh, Galthard and um, Sinclair, it it was more analyzed and assigned to the and and sorry and um, the linguists they uh, especially um, um, uh, social uh, uh, linguists they uh, talked about it and uh, they had more focus towards the exchanges and moves the way people talk, uh, which is purely product based and not. Uh, process based that is we only look at the product over here right we are looking at this the communication structure only product over here and we are not looking at the uh, we are not looking at who is speaking or why they are speaking it and how this reply is you know done nothing like that we're just only looking at the product the text only so discourse we take something from the classroom we take something from the normal communication we take something from the uh, from the courtroom and we look at it just as a product and we have models for that for example these models we can also look at the uh, uh, we can also look at discourse uh, from the process uh, as well as dialogue. Uh, so discourse as a process and discourse as a dialogue we'll study in our next lecture. Thank you.